Hey guys, doing Yu-Gi-Oh! Q&A number 11 today, where you guys send me in questions and I do my very best to answer them and help you guys out. So we're going to get right into the questions. So first off, the Money Team Angel um, is asking me about um, Dragon Rulers and Special Summoning and kind of how their restrictions work. So when it comes to um, certain cards that are special summon certain ways, you know, a lot of cards have a lot of these very specific special summon requirements. So Dragon Rulers are one of those um, cards that do that. So there are a few cards out there that when they're special summoned by their certain effects, they have certain restrictions and things that apply, like Archfiend Commander is one of those cards. There are not that many cards that do that. Um, and then there's also these cards, also not many, that whenever they're special summoned through any means, they also have um, a sort of requirement or a restriction. Um, again, not many cards. Uh, the God cards have this in common with Dragon Rulers. Um, they both have a, a kind of a limited effect. And the key part to understanding this is just reading the cards specifically. If the card says when, you know, special summoned, or if this card is special summoned, blah, blah, blah. If the card says when this card is special summoned, you know, by this effect that you use, that special effect that it was used to summon it, you know, then it's a different sort of thing. So with Dragon Rulers, it doesn't matter how you special summon them, as long as they are special summoned, they come back to the hand. And if you read the card closely, um, you can kind of understand that. So it doesn't matter how you special summon summon the Dragon Rulers, they still go back to your hand, which is why um, they're usually used for 7-star XYZs after you make use of you know their brute strength or whatever you're trying to currently do with them. So again, that's something in common, you know, Dragon Rulers have with uh, God cards and probably some other cards I can't think of at the moment. But you know, God cards also, um, when they get special summoned through any means, they end up um, getting destroyed or something like that. So it's just uh, basically reading the card very closely and understanding that it doesn't mention the specific special summon effect of the card. It just mentions special summons, which applies to, you know, all special summons, regardless of how you bring the card out. So now Andrus Neva is asking me about, you know, Jinzo and Solemn Warning and Bottomless and things like that. So this is really interesting because this is probably one of the first rulings that a lot of new players run into. Um, it's a really great starting point for understanding rulings on a more complicated level. So he already pretty much understands the ruling, but I'll go over it very quickly. So Jinzo obviously, you know, um, keeps traps from activating and things like that and, you know, negates traps on the field. The deal with Solemn Warning is that Solemn Warning and other cards like it, um, stop the summon from happening. So Jinzo's never on the field and cannot apply its effect. So Solemn Warning beats Jinzo. Bottomless Trap Hole does not beat Jinzo because Jinzo applies his effect once he's on the field. So that's really the key. If something negates the summon, then um, it won't be able to apply its sort of effect. But again, this is a great starting point for understanding rulings. If you're a new player and you want to start to understand rulings, I think this is great to just immediately understand the Jinzo ruling, and then you'll be able to start you know, stepping up to those really more complicated uh, rulings, because there are a lot of really complicated rulings in the game, and once you understand this one, you could really start to uh, understand more things, and you'll be able to come to those conclusions uh, on your own more often, which, you know, this uh, this guy's already done, so good for him, and good to see him being more interested in the rulings and trying to understand completely how they work. That's another big thing. People might ask for rulings, but they might not try to understand how they work, and it's like, you know, teach a man the fish. Once you know how the ruling works, you can understand how it applies to, like, 30 other similar rulings, so it's very good to understand the reasoning behind the ruling. And, you know, when people ask me questions on rulings, that's also what I try to do to help them out and understand um, how it can work down the line. So David Wilford is just asking me about, you know, what programs I use for recording. Um, so I used to use, you know, uh, just a MacBook, and I had very lightweight programs, so I was using, like, Bandicam and things like that. Um, so currently I am using Bandicam. I think it's a great lightweight tool, but I could use, you know, much more sophisticated stuff right now. I just don't really need to. So I think Bandicam is a great program for lightweight stuff. You know, Fraps is a lot more heavy duty. Um, and there's a bunch of other great programs out there. Um, and I do a lot of other, I use a lot of other programs like Audacity and Vegas and a bunch of other editing stuff. So there's a bunch of programs in there, but mainly for just, fo just recording, I use Bandicam and it's, you know, a free alternative to a lot of other things out there, which is very nice. Um, and I really like uh, using it. So Ryan Woodward just asked me, um, what, what's the best pull I got um, out of a pack? God, it's been so long since I bought a pack. Um, I don't have the money or time to keep the hobby, um, you know, outside uh, online. I can't really, you know, buy packs and stuff like that. I just can't really get into it. So, you know, it's been so long. Even when I did do that, 
I wouldn't really buy as many packs. I would buy more like structure decks um, and like uh, lots on eBay and things like that. Just because I wasn't so concerned with having the best cards. I was more concerned with just having a lot of cool cards. Um, I remember buying like the Kaiba structure deck at least like three times so I can get like three blue eyes white dragons and things like that. But, wow, I really can't remember like the best pulls I got out of a pack. Um, I just remember buying a lot of those stuff. And it's really cool just to just in case you just want a lot of cards, just go on eBay, buy a lot of like a thousand cards. You know, they might be really like crappy cards, but it's still really cool just to have so many, um, even if they're not the best cards. And for me, when I was uh, a kid, when I was younger, that was really cool for me just having so many cards. Um, so yeah, sorry, I can't really answer that question uh, too well, but you guys can let me know, you know, what the best pulls uh, you've gotten out of a pack. So simply Yu-Gi-Oh is asking me a very interesting question, kind of about decks and how, um, whether they're bad, whether they're not bad, whether it's about, you know, the time and the money you put into a deck. So I have a lot of different things I could say about this. You know, I have a certain philosophy. I don't think, I don't think it's right to call decks bad. Like, the reason we call decks bad is because we're comparing them to another deck. So you'll be like, well, this build is bad only because the good build of this deck runs XYZ. So it's not really, um, I don't think it's really about decks being bad. It's about comparing them to what's optimum and what's the best. And I think that's, that's okay. It's, you want to, you know, make your deck as good as possible, but I wouldn't consider your deck being bad in any means. You should, you know, try to understand what your deck's trying to do. And if your deck does what it's trying to do, then, you know, hats off to you. And that could be good. You know, just because a deck is made out of random cards, that doesn't mean it's a bad deck. It might beat other decks that are also made out of random cards because that's how the game works. It's all about, you know, what you're playing against and how it adds up. So I really, you know, I wouldn't really call a deck bad, and I think it applies to the other extreme. I don't like to call decks perfect. I don't like to call decks, like, the best. Um, I know some people on YouTube do that, and I just think it's kind of lazy because you should always keep trying to improve them and keep working on them, and that's, you know, my philosophy behind it. But I know, you know, a lot of other people have their own ideas about, you know, what's best and what's bad. But, you know, as long as you keep working on your deck and keep putting time in, as he's saying, you know, it'll keep improving and hopefully you'll have more fun with it and that's the main idea you know i have like 150 decks right now you know uh they're very they're a big variety between you know how good they are how bad they are what they can do but they're all fun to me and i try to play all of them and whether they're as good as others isn't really the main point to me what's what's more fun to me is how they are just to play them now i don't have to beat you know fire fists or um, Evil Swarm or Bujins in order to know that I enjoy this deck. I enjoy the deck because it does this and I think that's cool and that's all I really need. And I hope other people can um, approach the game like that because that's part of the reason why you know the meta is so, um, so strong and so and everyone just goes to the meta because they're not willing to play those lower tier decks because they don't think it's fun to, to lose or to play um, in a more complicated way or to have more variety in their deck. So I really think people should, you know, accept whatever's out there and really just try to have fun with the game because that's the point. You know, there's like almost 7,000 cards in the game right now. Do you really want to be the one person who's playing with the same 20 as the 100 other people, you know? Uh, so I really think that um, it's an inter interesting question he asks and just my opinion throwing it out there. It's not really about what's you know bad or perfect or good it's about what you enjoy and how you have fun playing the game but definitely keep working on decks as you go on so thank you to all the people who have asked me questions a lot of great questions a lot of great stuff if you do have a question for me you could post in the comments below or you can send me a message on twitter or tweet me um comments can be a little rough on youtube sometimes so twitter can be a better alternative but i know a lot of people don't use twitter so that's up to you guys you can ask me about rulings i'd really love to help people with that because i see people ask uh all the time on dueling network and it's kind of a mess in there and you can also ask me about you know archetypes and cards and decks and all kinds of stuff you can ask me stuff outside the game um if you want as well which is perfectly fine i'll try to answer uh whatever i can and just to let you guys know, if you don't know, Primal Origin is coming out pretty soon. So I will be doing some videos uh, on that very soon. So definitely uh, look forward to that. But looking forward to uh, the questions I get this week, and I'll t answer them next Friday. See you guys later.